Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Brazil Bound presented by Castrol GTX High Mileage. He's Jesse Marsh, I'm Matt Doyle. We're here for another nerd edition of this one. That's right. We're gonna take a look at what Portugal did last week against Germany and what we could expect of them coming up against the US on Sunday night, 6 p.m. on ESPN. It starts with this lineup, which is what the Germans saw going to have a different look against the U.S. Yeah, well, we know there's definitely going to be some changes due to suspension and injuries. And the first one that we know for sure is that Pepe will be out. And we think that his replacement will most likely be Costa. That's who came in right. for him during the match. A veteran player. Yes. Next is Almeida seems like he's injured. They chose to put in Eder in that match. We're not sure that he had a good enough performance to keep himself on the field. So there's two different options that we think are possible. Yeah, well, Ed Air is a little more athletic, likes to get into the channels, and then there's old reliable, Helder Pastiga. He's 32 years old, but he's still performing well for Lazio. A little more traditional uh, of a target man, a number nine. Not big, not going to overwhelm you, but he has gotten the job done for a long time. I think the smart money is on Ed Air, though. And then the other outside possibility is they have used Ronaldo as the lone forward at times, but we don't think that they'll do that, but that's something to keep yeah, your eye Cristiano on. Cristiano doesn't like that, so they yeah. probably won't. Another change that we know will have to take place is Coentral will have to come out because he's injured. So in for him will come Almeida, right? And then we're also hearing the possibility that Rui Patricio might be hurt, so they might make a change there. Right, they have a good uh, experienced backup guy who won the Europa League this year with Sevilla, so not much of a drop-off. I'm interested in this guy, though. Yeah, the only other one is they have a really good defensive midfielder named William Carvalho, and he's played in some warm-up matches, and he's a guy that can really provide them with a physical presence in the middle of the field to win balls, to start the attack, and he's good on set pieces. Yeah, so that kind of leads us into Sunday. Let's take a look at what we expect from them on the field. Now what we can see here is Portugal's 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, depending on what you think of their wingers. And that's as good a place as any to start. So let's take a look at how we think the U.S. is going to attack. Yeah, when you look at their formation lineup, you can see big pockets in this area and in this area. So it will be important for our midfielders and our front runners to find those little gaps to now receive balls into those spaces. The other part about those gaps is that neither Ronaldo or Nani like to track back that often. So you would think that we'll be able to find guys in those space and then have our outside backs join in to create 2v1 options against their outside backs. And their outside backs aren't that great on one-on-one -on -one defending. So that's an area that we can get at them. That's, the, that's where Germany got at them as well. They constantly overloaded towards the flanks. A lot of times you saw more than half the German team on one side, long switch, suddenly transition, Portugal defending on their back foot, and they're not very good at that. And of course, if that's where the game is going to be played for the U.S., I think there's another spot where it can be won, and it's right here. We saw Germany play a 4-6-0, basically. They didn't have a, a traditional center forward. Thomas Muller drifted off that back line and made the Portuguese defenders step out here where they're uncomfortable to try to defend him. And the dislocation between the central midfield and central defense provided plenty of space for him. Aaron Johansson, Clint Dempsey, probably Chris Wondolowski as well, I think, anyway, are going to have to start their runs a little deeper, not let these guys get tight, tight make them backpedal, make them defend space. Yeah, and along with that, if we can find players in those pockets, off of that you want to see penetrating runs because none of the four like to now face their own goal and get into foot races. And I think that if we can catch them in transition where we can play balls early, find the space in front of their back line, then have penetrating runs, it can be a way that we can get at their back line and challenge their defenders. Yeah, especially with Fabian Johnson on the overlap. The goal he scored against Turkey is a perfect example, I think, of what we're both talking about. Number three, though, set pieces, classic American soccer. Yeah, for sure when you look at their overall lineup, there's not a big amount of athleticism and big strong guys. So they gave up a goal against Germany, and I think that knowing that the U.S. team is very aggressive on set pieces, that's an area where if we get good service and good, get good runs, we should be able to find chances. Yeah, there are plenty of targets now, especially because I think John Brooks is going to start in this one. I expect him to go from the beginning. But set pieces are opportunity and danger because if they clear a corner kick well and it's off to the races, nobody's catching Ronaldo. Even on one leg, he's going to be able to outrun just about everybody out there. And him in transition is the scariest thing in the world of soccer right now. 
Wouldn't it be great to see John Brooks score another goal on a set piece? I think we would all like that. That would be awesome. All right. this for Jesse, I'm Matt. Thanks for watching Brazil Bound. We want to know what you think in the comments section below. Hit us up on Twitter, at MLS or at MLS Analyst. That's me. Still not available. Are you starting or am I? No, you are. Okay.